Hello, my name is Sydney and in today's video, I'm going to share my shadowing experience as a pre-med. I'm also going to talk about how to contact physicians, what to wear while shadowing, as well as what to expect. If you find this helpful, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you have any questions or any future topic suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Timestamps of each specific section will be also included in the description. And on that note, let's begin. Shadowing is following a doctor during the course of day-to-day -day work in a clinic, hospital, or operating room. I do want to make a key distinction. Any additional work done with this physician, either in operating duties or in clinical research, is considered an entirely different experience. I'm bringing light to this because I actually misspoke in my work and activities video when I was explaining how I consolidated my shadowing experiences. I pinned someone's comment bringing light to that as well. I didn't know I made that mistake when I was filling out my AMCAS application, but after after watching Dr. Gray's application renovation series, I just want to reiterate that shadowing is just following the doctor during his or her work day. If a doctor agrees to let you shadow, work with their schedule to figure out how often and how frequent you're going to shadow them. A lot of my experiences were tag-alongs with family friends or referrals from friends. From what these physicians told me, they said that one to three days is pretty representative of what they did on a day-to-day -day basis. I highly recommend leading up to breaks. Plan in advance to have shadowing opportunities lined up when you'll be most free during work hours of the work week. In terms of how many hours you need to shadow, there's no definitive answer. I would just say that 40 to 50 hours across specialties shows promise that you are committed as well as you have a pretty firm understanding of the day in the life of a physician. Shadowing more doesn't necessarily make or break your application. I would just suggest if there are other areas in your application to work on to really focus your energy on there. I shadowed sporadically throughout my college experience after I graduated as well as after I submitted my medical school applications. I want to bring this up since I also saw it in Dr. Gray's videos. Oh, by the way, Dr. Gray has a channel called Medical School Headquarters where he gives great adcom advice and perspective being that he is a physician faculty member. He emphasized the importance of continual involvement even after submitting your medical school applications. One, it's important to show that you sustain interest and two, it may appear as a red flag flag to abruptly stop an activity after submitting your application and fulfilling a check mark. While you're in the midst of your application and are still doing these involvements, always project the hours you would have upon completion. And just in general, upholding shadowing is very important because you get more exposure to different specialties as well as network with a lot of healthcare professionals. From my experience, I shadowed five different specialties under seven physicians. And I'm going to list the specialty name, when I shadowed, as well as how many hours I did for each physician to total up to 100 hours. So Looking at my list, my first shadowing experience was a family medicine physician during my second year of college and I shadowed her for 16 hours at an outpatient clinic. My second shadowing experience was an also another family medicine physician during my first gap year for 20 hours and he did mostly house visits. Third shadowing experience was actually integrated into my job. It was with an interventional radiologist during my gap year and I shadowed her for 20 hours. The next shadowing experience was under two pediatric allergy and immunology during my gap year and in total this was 30 hours. After I submitted my AMCAS application, I had a couple more shadowing opportunities present themselves so I was like why not? I shadowed a hospitalist which is an internal medicine doctor in the hospital for six hours and lastly I met a physical medicine and rehabilitation physician. I shadowed her for one day at a multi-specialty clinic for eight hours at the children's hospital. How are you going to find people to shadow? Before we delve into that, I just want to state how important it is to be proactive and intentional. You really have to be purposeful in seeking out these opportunities. Number one, you can contact a doctor for shadowing through the cold email. You are able to contact physicians in these different clinical environments, such as a faculty member, so a doctor who also teaches, a doctor in a private practice, in a community clinic, or in a hospital system. I do want to note that when you are trying to shadow someone well integrated in the hospital, hospital system, there may be more red tape and restrictions that might make the shadowing opportunity more difficult. For example, I came from a really big public school and since there are so many pre-meds concentrated on that campus next to that hospital, they had a very stringent policy of having no shadowing. The second avenue to find shadowing is through family and friends referrals, which was my main mode of finding shadowing. Coming out of the other end of this experience just taught me how open and willing people are to help. Putting that out there in the world that you are pre-med, you'd be surprised 
surprised of how many people themselves will offer to allow you to shadow them or to find someone that they know to connect you with. I babysat during my gap year, but the parent was a physician, so she let me follow her. And this was also another random one. My friend actually met this doctor at the golf course. Hearing that his friend was pre-med, he was more than willing to look over my AMCAS application. Third way you can find shadowing is through your college's student orgs. At my undergrad, we have this one club dedicated to shadowing. Since it was so limited in spots, it was highly, highly competitive to get in. I personally did not get in, but that was a way to directly link students with a mentor in a specific specialty. The second way I saw student orgs kind of play that intermediary role was through clinical research that didn't necessarily create the shadowing, but it put you in the environment to make shadowing connections. And this just so emphasizes that you truly have to put in the work to contact these physicians. You should never rely on the org to make the experience, but you yourself are meant to make the experience. Fourth way you can find shadowing is through the connections you make through volunteering or through working. Personal example, I did a lot of volunteering with the community clinic. The head honcho of that free clinic was a doctor. I personally did not ask her to shadow, but I worked pretty closely with her and just so happened she was willing to write me a letter of rec. And even in volunteering experiences that seem unrelated to medicine, you'll just be surprised at the different types of people who also filter through these experiences. For example, I taught at a Vietnamese school and it just so happened that the principal was the internal medicine doctor I shadowed. <laughs> Number five, just general networking. I've been trying really hard to always be open, friendly, and receptive to conversations. So you'll just surprise yourself with the different doors that open. During a random event that I had to go to, I sparked conversation with someone and eventually led on the topic of me being pre-med. Little did I know she was a doctor and she just invited me to follow her to work a mobile clinic one day. A good rule of thumb is business casual. Something that's simple, clean, and professional. You want to appear presentable to the patients that they see that day. Also, don't forget to have a good attitude. <laughs> But to break this down even further for females, a nice blouse, a pants or a long skirt, low heels or some comfortable closed-toed shoes since you probably will be walking a lot. And if you are going to wear jewelry, something very minimalistic and clean. As for hair, I feel like a mom. Something that's just clean, simple. For nails, either a neutral color or just bare nails, no chips. For males, I'm guessing dress shirt, some slacks, and some nice dress shoes. Also highly recommend bringing a small notebook and pen just to jot down anything you might find meaningful or that you want to remember later. In terms of what to expect, I'm going to share a sample timeline that you might experience while trying to find shadowing. For the initial contact, you may expect limited to no responses while you're doing the cold email. I just encourage you to stay persistent. While you are sending out email requests, always uphold email etiquette, making sure your emails are concise, professional, that you are responsive, and ultimately that you're appreciative. Even if they can't take on you as a shadow, maybe they could refer you to a colleague that will be open to having shadows. Let's just say you're in the rhythm of correspondence. Now it's time to set the shadow. I recommend the first email that you first send to them centralized on an introduction of, as well as a request if they are open to taking on shadows. If they are, the second email could focus on sharing your schedule availability, what your general week looks like, as well as your month in case they would only be able to take you on later. I would also ask for steps on how to start, especially if there is a certain protocol such as how to set up a visitor's badge or are there any special hours or days that you should be aware of. After you finalize those details, it's now time to shadow. So on the very first day, and this is so important to be on time. If you're unfamiliar with the area, I highly suggest you to figure out the location, parking, and check-in details. Be sure to introduce yourself to all members of the team. And lastly, always be kind and friendly. After introductions, the doctor will most likely give you an overview of the day. When it comes time to start shadowing, the doctor will most likely introduce you to the patient as well as ask the patient if it's okay for you to be in the room. So depending on the patient's level of comfort is whether you'd be allowed in that room. While you are a shadow, remember to be attentive and friendly because ultimately they're letting you be in the room to learn. After the appointment, the doctor will most likely debrief what happened with you. And this all depends on the doctor, how deep they delve into this debrief. From my experiences, I was very fortunate to have doctors who were super involved in letting me ask any questions or even asking me questions, why they did certain things, the patient history, what test results meant in relation to the overall story of that person's health. A doctor even showed me how to practice manually taking blood pressure. Another physician showed 
showed the importance of every member on that healthcare team and even told me notes of certain patients who were non-compliant and how that ultimately affected their care. You should always give the doctor as well as the medical staff your full attention while you're shadowing, but in those little pockets of time when everyone has to kind of do their own things or the doctor is dictating, this would be the time to jot down anything you found insightful or interesting. One thing I also want to emphasize is patient confidentiality is always key. Never write down anything that would identify these patients, such as their name or anything else identifying. If you do choose to write about these experiences in your application in the future, after a couple cycles of the introduction to the patient, the actual shadowing as well as the debrief, the doctor will excuse you. But unless it was specified earlier how long the shift you were going to shadow the doctor, expect to be there the whole full working day. But after your shadowing experience is done, the last thing is the follow-up. I'd say it's very important to always follow up with a thank you, either through an email or another nice gesture. I personally went the route with a handwritten thank you card as well as a little gift or gift card if I knew the address to send these items to, but if not, appreciative email works just as well. But one of my favorite parts of the follow-up are updates. Keep in mind, these doctors are part of your medical school journey now. Keep them updated because let me tell you, they really, really appreciate it. Whether that's anticipating taking the MCAT and scoring well, let them know. Whether you submitted your AMCAS application and you're at this part of the cycle, they would love to hear about it. And lastly, this was the sweetest news. If you do get any acceptances, chime in and let them know how thankful you were for them to show you qualities of the doctor that you want to be in the future. So that covers everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. This advice is a little bit hard to follow to a T right now, but I hope this will be helpful in the future once health systems start allowing shadowing as freely as before. Another option would be to maybe ask physicians about telemedicine visits, but ultimately I recommend working with a doctor you're in communication with to find the best shadowing plan for you. Also, I just want to say how thankful I am for 700 subscribers. It is mind-boggling, absolutely insane in the membrane that you guys are here, but I am just so thankful that you guys are. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.